Well, good morning, everyone. It is a Saturday morning in Jackson and West Tennessee. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. With everything being the same, we should have John right here with us. Hello, John. How are you this morning? Well, pretty good, I guess. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes, sir. Got you loud and clear. All right. Well, uh, things didn't work out the way we wanted to this morning. But, True. Uh, that's the way technology is sometimes. <laughs> but glad to be here. Especially Hope when you all are doing okay. Especially when you and I are, in, are partly in charge of the technology, we have a problem. But uh, anyway, what uh, what we were what we were attempting to do was do some long distance video this morning, and uh, we tried uh, tried hard, and it just uh, wasn't wasn't what we wanted it to be. So we've got the audio, and that's the main thing. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. 731-891-6161 is the call-in number this morning. And you can text us on the Victory Honda text line, as always, 731-410-7560. And this show every week is a presentation of West 10 Fence Company and Economy Siding and Windows. John, how's the weather down there? Well, it is uh, kind of cool in the uh, high 50s right now. Wow. I have a pelican sitting over here on the rail, <laughs> and uh, I think he's eyeing this strawberry that uh, I've got by my coffee cup, uh-huh. so somebody's going to have to go in a minute. Yeah, i I got a feeling who that might be. I think so if I think if he jumps, it's going to be easier on everybody. Say that one more time, Jim. I lost you there. I said, if the pelican jumps, it'll be easier on everybody. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, well, he's uh, eyeballing my strawberry, and and uh, uh, it could get frisky here in just a few minutes. So <laughs> That could be interesting. But I'm doing fine. Uh, yep. Had to come down, do a little, have some meetings down south ways, and... Uh, as soon as I finish the show, we're going to start heading home. So everything's going just fine. Well, that's good. Now, what's uh, what's what's on your mind this morning? Where what do we need to uh, to begin with to help some folks out with their honeydews? Now, we're going to have a, we're going to have some early rain this morning and some heavier rain. They're saying throughout the rest of the day. So, folks may need to, to work inside today. What what you got on your mind? Well, you know, um, right before I left. I had a couple of phone calls that had to do with people that uh, was shopping for locks uh-huh. uh, on their doors. They, you know, it, it, <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh when they asked me. They said, you know, I've had these same locks on my door since the house was built. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> and um, they said, well, I'm, I'm looking at some of this uh, new technology. I said, well, we may be in trouble right now because I don't know too much about that. But what can I do for you? Well, they wanted to get some of these uh, new deadbolt locks right. that had the push-button combination. I said, well, I got one of those, and it works pretty good. And uh, they asked me what kind it was, and I said, well, I've got a sergeant one on one door. And I got a sledge on the other, and uh, it works pretty good as long as you keep the batteries up. And uh, they said, you mean it takes batteries? And I said, yep. It'll take, some of them will take a double A, and some of them will take a C battery. But I said, you got to be careful, because I did one on my garage door out in my shop. And I had a little accident. I accidentally bumped the uh, back cover of the lock with a two-before one day when I was working in the shop. And I knocked that little nub that holds the cover on the back of the battery. I broke it off. Right. And they said, well, what difference does that make? I said, well, it's kind of like this. If I slam the door real hard, the batteries fall out, and then I can't open the door anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, it, it, it's uh you have to be careful, but that was that's what gorilla tape is for. We got that thing stuck on there. Yep. And uh I don't have that trouble anymore. But uh you know, I, I I do recommend that. It is something that someone can do themselves 
and you don't have to have necessarily a, a trained person to do that. You just got to follow the instructions. Right. So as long as your wife's around and she can read them for you, you might be able to get through it because I did try it without the instructions. A little difficulty, and I ended up having to go back and read about them. So, uh, you know, it's a it's a very easy thing to do, and uh, get the kind that you can change the combinations if you need to. Right. And uh, it's a good little weekend project if you want to do that, and you can set the codes in those of those to be just as easy as you want or as complicated as you want. And you can make every door different or make every door the same. But uh, it is something that uh, if you've got a little hankering to do, you can get them to where you actually have numbers and buttons on them and, uh, or you have the, uh, the type that has the touch pad. And uh, that works pretty good unless you're wearing gloves and it's cold outside. You may not want to do, to do that one. But uh, then somebody asked me about these uh, these little uh, locks that tie into the Internet. This, uh, I think Nest is one of the brands. And uh, my son got one of those. And um, he said, Dad, if you could just cut the hole in the door, I'll take it from there. And I said, well, I'll gladly do that. I'll cut the hole. So I got out my tools. And it was a new installation, and we, we put those in there. And uh, and then he, I got it put together, and I said, well, bud, it's all yours. He says, okay. So he went over and sat out on the couch. And I said, well, what are you doing over there? He says, I'm fixing my lock. I said, from the couch? <laughs> he said, yep. So... Next thing I know, he said, looks up at me and says, hey, Dad, watch this. And he punched a button from his phone over there on the couch, and the door locked. Uh-huh. I heard this click, and I said, how'd you do that? He says, well, watch this. And he punched it again, and it opened up. He says, I can be anywhere in the world, and I can open and close this, uh, open, uh, lock and unlock this door. I said, huh, that's just, that ain't right. We're getting a little too smart. But uh, there's a lot of that technology out there. And uh, for young people, it seems to be real easy. But uh, yeah, doesn't older it, though? folks, or maybe it's just me. I think it's just me. No, I think it's uh, not just you. It's hard-headed to kind of buy into some of this stuff. I'm, I'm the same way. You know, I, a lot of stuff out there you think you'd like to have, but then you get to thinking about it. And uh, you got to have another password, another something here, and another something there. It's just too much to remember. Give me, you know, I can tell whether I got a key in my pocket or not. Well, yeah, and you know, <laughs> even if I forget it and leave it in my jeans, and it goes through the washing machine, I'll find it, <laughs> and uh, it, it'll be all right. But I don't know. Yep. Well, I have been informed by that's one of about, our. T- that's that's that's. I've been informed by one of our texters that we've we've got a little technical problem on the air, and we are working on that texter. I do apologize. Uh, things uh, things don't always work the way we we want them to, as we said earlier in the show. We we're trying to rectify that problem as we speak. So just hang in there with us for a couple of minutes. We appreciate the the information though. Kind of helps us on this end too. Uh, John, let me let me do this. Let me take about uh, two minutes here and take a quick uh, commercial break, and uh, we'll be right back with John Allen's Tricks of the Trade. Hang on. We're still here. 8.07 on a Saturday morning. Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass.
This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Don't wait until it's too late. Call now and get peace of mind for you and your family. Call 800 450-7731. 800-450-7731. 800-450-7731. 800-450-7731. Follow the Union University Bulldogs and Lady Bulldogs this season right here on News Talk West Tennessee with Gary Neese, now in his 32nd season as their voice. Our broadcast sponsors are First Bank, Mini Dental Implants, Gary A. Taylor Investments, The Bank of Jackson, Collision South, Chick-fil-A, Union University, McCoy's Heating, Air, and Plumbing, Snappy Tomato Pizza, Brasfield Construction Company, and the Allison Insurance Group. Bulldog Basketball, exclusively here on 93.1 News Talk West Tennessee. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. And this is John Allen's Tricks of the Trade on a Saturday morning. You can also get us on uh, News Talk, West Tennessee, uh, dot com or uh, any of our streaming uh, outlets. Uh, you, uh, not YouTube, but uh, y'all.com is available to you right now. So just dial that up and you can see and hear what all is going on. And watch us pull our hair out when the technology doesn't do what we want it to do. John, you back with me? I think I'm still here. Yeah, you're still there. And I still have a pelican. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no matter where I am, I'm there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. No matter where you are, there oh. you go. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now we're talking we talk about locks and, and, uh, and all the new technology out there. Is, is this stuff... Has it been out there long enough now? Do you feel like it's reliable? If somebody asks you to put one, put one in, you're you you feel like you can do that with uh, in good faith. Yeah, I, I think I think everything is pretty reliable to the point that uh, they got all the bugs out of it, uh, and and it's easy for you know just a normal person to do. It really doesn't take a whole lot of or it doesn't take really any training on it if you can follow instructions. And that's always been my problem, follow instructions. But uh, it, it's uh, it's a good thing to do, and I, I encourage people to do that. Um, especially if you've got locks that are, you know, 20 and 30 years old, it might be time to, to change them out a little bit. Yep, that's, that's, that's true. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like the I like the convenience of it, but I just don't know whether I want to go through the hassle of learning another system. You know, you know how that is. But I'm not young, so that's a that's a that's a big difference. A big difference. We are we are fortunate. Of, uh, yes. Technology. Go ahead. No, I was going to say we're fortunate every week to have two great sponsors to make sure that this show uh, gets out to uh, to all the folks that are listening. And one of those uh, you and I have both used uh, recently, West 10 Fence Company, out on Hollywood Drive. Tell us a little bit about your experience with them. You know, I, I have been a fan of them for quite a few years. And, uh, you know, in my line of work, I have to use... Uh, subcontractors sure. sometimes to help get a lot of the jobs done, and and I hooked up with them a long time ago, and uh, uh, found an awful lot out about them to where you know I found that they they came out to the job, they had the trained personnel to do it, they uh, got right to it. You didn't have to you know watch them and stand behind them and. Make sure they were doing it right. They knew exactly what to do. They got in. They got out. They cleaned up their mess. And uh, they have put up a variety of different fences for me. You know, we put up chain link. We put up wrought iron. Um, it's a wood fence. They put those up. I had not got them to put a barbed wire fence up yet. But who <laughs> knows what's going to happen next week. But I know that they're there to, to help out. And uh, we're a really... 
uh, got hooked up with them over was uh, automatic gates. That's something that a lot of people want. And nobody's around that if you have trouble with them, that can fix them. Right. And, uh, and you'll always have, eventually you'll have trouble with them. And not only can they put in the automatic gates to where, you know, a, a sensor will open the gate or a combination code will open the duck gate. And, uh, a lot of people are locking that security right now. And not only can they put them in, they can repair them, uh, put all kinds of gates up, whether they swing open or slide to the side. But um, I just like using them because uh, they can get it all taken care of. And if something does go wrong, they're there to take care of the problem and get you back up and running as quick as problem, so, uh, quick as possible. So, I highly, highly recommend West Ken Fence Company. And I don't just say that; I've used them, and they've uh, they show me they show me their stuff every time they get. Absolutely, they located at twenty one fifty eight Hollywood Drive here in the city six six eight seven three one six six eight fifty nine fifty nine for sales information. You can call Ricky Pennington. It's R Pennington, the number one at yahoo dot com. If you need to contact him that way, West Ten Fence Company, one of our two title sponsors here on Tricks of the Trade with John Allen every Saturday morning. Call in numbers as always, 731-891-6161. And the Victory Honda text line is available to you too, 731-410-7560. And a texter, if uh, the one that texted in a little bit earlier about the overlap there, uh, it appears that uh, we, we have that under control now. So if you'll send me a thumbs up that it's okay where you are, I would appreciate that. Give us a call. Give us a text. John is waiting to talk to you about whatever honeydew helper problems you uh you have this morning and uh like i said it's raining in west tennessee so it's probably going to be an an inside problem you know i had a little incident this morning jim that i had to do a service call down here where i'm at oh you're you kidding and, uh, <laughs> it, it, it was uh it's kind of funny you know i don't go anywhere without a, a wrench or a screwdriver Right. It's just my nature. I keep them in my, my uh, suitcase all the time. So when I got got in last night, uh, I had to use the facilities. You know what I mean? Right, and, I uh, do. I went to sit down, and uh, I went to sit down, and and I thought the toilet was going to turn over. Whoa! Uh, it was, it was, it was all loose on the floor. So I, I got up and I went in my suitcase and got my my pliers and had to come back and sit down on the toilet and tighten the nuts up on the floor. I had to do a little booty wiggle right there to get it to see right <laughs> and, uh, and 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 tighten those and tighten those bolts up. I right. didn't want to call maintenance, so I went ahead and tightened it up. But that wasn't all. And I've still got another problem here, or at least I got part of it fixed. I, I got up this morning getting ready to do the show, and uh, uh, I went and I put my glasses on. Right. And they were dirty because I had splattered stuff on them where I was using the grill last night. So I went to clean my glasses. And you know that little little uh, piece that on your glass that where it rests on your nose? Yes. It uh, popped off. <laughs> Mm. It went right down the drain. Oh no, man! <laughs> so I ended up having to take the had to take the drain system apart in this room to fish <laughs> out the nose piece that goes on the glasses. Didn't you? I you, can't go anywhere without tearing something up. If if you'd had your gorilla tape with you, you could have fixed it. Well, you know, it, it is. It, it's kind of it's kind of rough when you put your glasses on. And you got this piece of metal jabbing down in your nose because you don't have the nose pad on it. Yep. But uh, we survived. We, uh, just before I called you this morning, I got the sink put back together after taking the drain apart, cleaning it apart, and getting all that nasty mess out. But anyway, you never know when you got to need a screwdriver or a pair of pliers. This is, this is true. This is true. I uh, got, a, got a text uh a uh, bought a house a couple of years ago, has hardwood floors throughout. 
We were used to carpeting in vinyl. What do I do to keep the hardwood floors clean and scratch free? Oh, yeah, now, that's kind of a complicated question. <laughs> uh, scratch free. They're going to scratch. I mean, it's wood. It yeah. just depends on how you treat them. Uh, Got to be careful about dragging things across them. Uh, make sure that all your chairs have those little nylon uh, uh tips on the end of them or the felt tips to where you don't scratch your floor. Right. And uh, I clean I clean my hardwood floors with Murphy's oil soap. That's what what I use. Right. And uh, it seems to do a real good job. And uh, you know we used to when I was little and and you had that little area of, of hardwood around your area rug in the middle of the floor. Right. You used to spray a dust mop down with pledge and go around the side of them, and, and it works out pretty good. But the uh, main thing is just keep all the, the dirt and grit off those floors because you'd be surprised by just walking on it and scuffing your feet on it. If you've got dirt and grit on the floor, it'll it'll affect that finish. Um, be careful about your pets. Um uh, your dogs that have the long toenails are bad about uh, scratching floors, but those of you that have these synthetic fake floors, as I call them, and one of the products in particular is called a Pergo. Uh-huh. Uh, that is a laminate floor, and that floor scratches real easy. And I always, when people inquire about it, because it is inexpensive, but I look around the house and I say, do you have pets? <laughs> and if they say yes, I said, how big is your dog? And and pretty soon Fido will come out and I say, you're going to have to clip his toenails or get a different kind of floor down here because it's going to really scratch up. And you can't fix a laminate floor. If you get scratches in it, it's going to stay scratched. So, you know, that's about all I can tell you on floors. When, when you're talking about "quote unquote" hardwood floors, is the laminate kind of on the uh, the bottom end of it, and then you have what what is it called manufactured uh, wood, and then you got the real hardwood? Is that kind of the pecking order? That, that's pretty much it. You have the the laminate woods, which you don't. It's not real wood. It's a it's kind of like sheet plastic, or some people say it's got a pomata finish on it. Right. And uh, it does have its purpose. It has its purpose. It's a, it's an inexpensive floor, and it does look good. But it, it, uh, you don't ever want to use that kind of floor in wet locations uh, because it'll swell up on the edges if water's able to get into it. Right. But uh, if you go to engineered wood after that, um, the top layer of an engineered wood is the actual wear surface, and it's real thin. Um, underneath that are several plies of different species of wood. Right. Now, used to, when they first came out with engineered wood, they used balsa wood uh, as the, the core. Balsa so, wood? And then they found out with uh, uh, oh, uh, women that were a little on the... Uh, uh, heavy side, uh -huh. and uh, and they like to wear high heels. Right. Uh, that didn't work out too well because <laughs> it's, uh, they would put imprints of their high heels in that soft balsa wood. and So most of the manufacturers have changed uh, and put a little harder wood in between the plies. And uh, then you go to your regular hardwood, the real stuff, and most of it is three quarters of an inch thick, and it's solid wood plank. Right. And you can put that down, and then if something goes wrong later on, and the finish gets messed up, you can uh, you can screen it, you can refinish it, you can sand on it, and uh, it's a floor that if you put it down, uh, you can pretty well keep it. Uh, whole life of the house it, uh, it won't wear out and uh, it, 
it's there it's there for the duration right yeah, you know, you see on on the on the TV shows a lot. They, they'll they'll pull up some carpet in a seventy year old house and then say, "Look here, man, this wood this wood is still good." And they'll go in there and, and sand it down and uh, refinish it, and it looks like like it's brand new. But what these these modern things that that's not going to happen, is it? No, you don't. You can't refinish the laminate floors at all, and you can on the engineered wood. Uh, it's difficult. It's not impossible, but it's difficult right. to refinish those because if you sand them much, you'll get through that top layer, which is less than an eighth of an inch thick. So you can't put a big sander on top of it. Plus, on top of that, all of these manufactured woods have a groove on the side of them so that it doesn't show any of the, any of the irregularities. Right. Uh, and the thickness of the plank. So you got this V groove, and when you run a sander or something over it, it doesn't sand down in the V groove. Mm. So that groove is always there. So you got to get that real clean uh, before you, you put a finish uh, back on it. Right. Okay. But the hardwood, you can grind that puppy down, do whatever you want to. All right. Uh, John got a, a text on the Victory Honda text line this morning. And uh, thanks to the other two texters who sent me the thumbs up. I think we've got our technical problem under control. Uh, here's, here's the text, John. It said, a few weeks ago, John talked about painting that ugly 70s brown paneling. Can you revisit how to prep that paneling for painting? Say the, say the last part of that, Jim. They they're the talking brown paneling. And yeah, what? they want to. They want you to uh, to tell again how to prep the paneling for before you paint it. Okay, uh, you know when everyone had that paneling back then, there was a product on the market that everybody just swore by. It was called liquid gold. Yeah, I remember. And and you would take that stuff and put it on a rag. And you would, uh, you know, basically polish that paneling. Made it look real good uh, until the dog kind of went up beside it and the <laughs> dog hair stuck to the side of it because it was kind of greasy. Right. But it looked good. But here, uh, people that still have that paneling, they want to paint it now. And in order to paint that, you'd be surprised how much of a residue buildup uh, you'll get on paneling, especially if if there's smokers in the house. Oh, yeah. Nicotine will stick to that paneling, and man, it, it's really nasty looking. So, uh, what you can do, you got to prep that surface in order to get it ready to paint to where paint will even stick to it. So, one product that you can use, it's called TSP, it's trisodium phosphate. Right. And you buy it at a paint store, and uh, you mix it with water. To, it's a powder, like detergent. And you'll mix that up with warm water and and literally wash your paneling down. You want to be able to get all of the oil off of it, any residue that might still be on it, and, uh, and, and just give it a good cleaning and scrubbing. Now, when it gets dry... It's going to have a little white haze on it. Okay. And uh, that's that's natural. And when it's dry and you start seeing that white haze, you know it's time to go back and get that off. So you'll take a, a clean rag and just uh, rinse it with, with cold water and go back over that paneling with the uh, uh, wash it off to get that haze off. Right. And then you'll wait till it's completely dry. Now, this is this is the part now where you got to figure out what kind of paneling do you have? Do you have the real thing that's wood, mm-hmm. or do you have the type of paneling that might be masonite and it's got just a, for lack of a better term, a, a wallpaper cover on right. it? Right. And uh, you can take your, your thumbnail and scratch on it a little bit, and. It, and you can tell what you got most of the time. But if it's real wood, 
you can take a, a piece of sandpaper and just lightly sand. Just all you want to do is just kind of rough up the finish a little bit, right? And then wipe it down with a tack rag to get the sawdust off of it, and then put a binding primer on that panel. And something like uh, the, the product around our town that, that's kind of common is called kilts, right? Uh, there's another one called bins. And you want to put a penetrating binding primer on that. Now, if you have a masonite product, uh, or maybe it's fresh wood, you can prime it with the same stuff. And this is very important that you use this bonding primer, because when it gets finished, if you take your thumbnail and rake over it, if it's bonded good, you won't be able to scratch it off. Okay. If it starts to peel up, uh, you know you didn't get your paneling good and clean. Okay. But assuming that you got it uh, down a little bit uh, and it dries properly, then you can go back over that with just a normal latex uh, paint. Now, All right. if oh, you've got let me let me let me stop paneling, you let me stop you there, John. It says texture says not real wood. Okay, that's, I'm fixing to get into that. Okay. All right. If you don't have the real wood, keep doing what I just told you. Clean it real good. Put a bonding primer on that. And make sure that your panels are nailed good to the wall. Okay. In other words, you press on it. It doesn't need to be uh, loose on your studs. Right. Um uh, Now's the time of the year to paint your paneling because the humidity is down. And the cracks that are between each piece of paneling, which they are four feet apart, uh, they'll be open. So when you go to painting it, take your brush and paint down in that crack uh, to get the paint down in the crack as best you can. Do not caulk that crack. If you do, you're going to regret it uh, because it'll open back up later on because that press board paneling expands and contracts readily. Just let it let it move on its own, but you just get it, a good coat of paint on it as good as you can. Right. Now, what I just told you, the remedy for doing that, of taking care of paneling, will also work, work on kitchen cabinets. Um, it's very important get all the oil off of the, the paneling off of the front of your cabinets, like around your door handles and your hinges where you touch it all the time. Right. And get that clean, and then you'll find that the, the paint will will clean real good. So uh, it's a it's kind of a tedious job, and it's one that you can't just necessarily get it all done in a weekend because you got to wait for each layer of paint to dry. Right. And normally, it's going to take you three coats of paint uh, after you clean it. You'll have a primer and two finish coats, especially if it's a real dark paneling. Okay. So, uh, good luck with all that. All right. And the texture just sent another Dex back in. It says, thank you, guys, with three exclamation points. I believe we might have helped him out a little bit this morning. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen here on 93.1 on this Saturday morning. We're going to take a... Uh, uh, a little longer commercial break this time, let you hear from some of the folks that support what we do here at 93.1, and then we'll be right back with more of John Allen. Stay there with us. Who's under your hood? For anything at all related to a car, join me, Russ Evans. And I'm Chris Carter. And I'm Shannon Nordstrom. You don't have to be a gearhead to enjoy under the hood. We keep it light and fun and on a level that everyone can understand while you get free advice and learn about your car. Check us out on the web at underthehoodshow.com or facebook.com slash underthehoodshow and join us every week right here. Under the Hood every Saturday morning from 6 till 8. Presented by Gene Langley Ford and Humble, the dealership service built. 
Nothing is more important than protecting your family and property. That's why you should make a free call right now to Vivint, the number one smart home services provider in the U.S. Vivint will make your home safer and more secure with a state-of-the-art system that's so simple to use. Vivint smart home specialists provide award-winning monitoring of your system 24-7, 365 to respond to any emergency, even when you can't. And with the 4.5-star rated Vivint smart home mobile app, control your entire house from anywhere. Locks, cameras, security system, all at your fingertips tips on your mobile device. Call Vivint now and get a free quote, professional installation, and full smart home service for as little as $2 per day. Equipment purchase or service agreement required. Conditions apply. Call now. A smart home is a safer home. So protect your family and your property, home or business, with a Vivint smart home system. Call 800-462-5722. 800-462-5722. That's 800-462-5722. 800-462-5722. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. Sakura set the standard in West Tennessee for Japanese sushi rolls and hibachi grill dishes. By popular demand, Sakura added a Chinese menu. For starters, egg drop and hot and sour soup. Entrees include chicken broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, Mongolian beef, and lo mein with your choice of meat. Our Chinese lunch menu starts at just $7.95. Sakura also delivers to your home or business, or you can call ahead for pickup at 664-2878. Sakura's dining area now open and serving at 50% capacity. Sakura on Carriage House Drive. Nothing is more important than protecting your family and property. That's why you should make a free call right now to Vivint, the number one smart home services provider in the U.S. Vivint will make your home safer and more secure with a state-of-the-art system that's so simple to use. Vivint smart home specialists provide award-winning monitoring of your system 24-7, 365 to respond to any emergency, even when you can't. And with the 4.5-star rated Vivint smart home mobile app, control your entire house from anywhere. Locks, cameras, security system, all at your fingertips tips on your mobile device. Call Vivint now and get a free quote, professional installation, and full smart home service for as little as $2 per day. Equipment purchase or service agreement required. Conditions apply. Call now. A smart home is a safer home. So protect your family and your property, home or business, with a Vivint smart home system. Call 800-462-5722. 800-462-5722. That's 800-462-5722. 800-462-5722. Tennessee, John Allen, Tricks of the Trade on 93.1, remotely today as he's out doing some work in the hinterlands. Good morning again, John. There you are, I got you. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It's uh, coming right along, coming right along. Uh, yeah, I think we got the, the paneling thing. Uh, another Another question uh, pops up is uh, it, talk. It, it says, speaking of hardwood flooring, the new vinyls and ceramic that look like hardwood are these good alternatives for real wood? Right.
Hey, John, let me uh, let me ask you to try check your phone and make sure you haven't accidentally hit your mute button over there. I'm able to hear you, but we're not getting we're not getting it uh, where we need to uh, to get it. Try try that and see what happens. Are you good there? Uh, nope, about the same. About the same. Tell you what, let me uh, let me try something. Let me try something. Let me try something here and see if I can get it to do better this way. All right, now talk to me. That sound any better to you? That'll work. It's old style, but it'll work. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think I think we've got a we got well, another uh, we got every every gremlin that we own here at the radio station showed up this morning, so uh, we'll we'll we can we can make it work this way. <laughs> I, I think I may have to translate for you, but uh, uh, it's anyway. You were talking uh, back back up a step or two. You were talking about the the alternative of using ceramic and the new uh, what do they call that luxury plank vinyl that everybody's using now in instead of hardwood. Yeah. What what are the major advantages? Well, the, it's called LVP, Luxury Vinyl Plank. Right. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a very affordable uh, substitute. It wears well. It, uh, it's very affordable. You can buy it at around $3, $3 and a quarter a foot. Uh, it interlocks and goes together well. The only thing you got to remember on that is that it moves. It's constantly expanding and contracting. So around the perimeter of your room, you need to uh, do not fasten it in any way. Let the shoe mold sit on top of it. Don't nail down through the floor. Uh, nail your shoe mold back into your baseboard. Okay. Um, because it will expand and contract. It's always good to let that floor acclimate. 24 to 48 hours before you put it down and uh, and keep that room temperature constant. One of the disadvantages I have found with that floor, especially if you use it in, say, a cabin or something like that where you may or may not keep the temperature constant, is it will crawl on you and it'll, it'll, uh, it, will, it will move a lot, especially in big rooms. It'll move up to three-quarters of an inch. And uh, unless you have enough mechanism to allow for that expansion and contraction, uh, those interlocking uh, tabs will will pop open, and that floor will crawl on you. Okay. As far as far as, as durability and everything, when when you got pets in the house, we talked about that that earlier. You it's going to be maybe a little better than than a uh, than a mid mid priced hardwood. Well, it's considered a lifetime floor uh, as long as you keep it clean and and uh, properly maintained. It should not wear out because it's a solid vinyl all the way through. And uh, it, it's a good floor. I mean, uh, we put a lot of that down, and it comes in a variety of, of patterns. And, and some of the patterns that are hardwood, I mean, unless you just really look at it, you think you got a real hardwood floor down? Oh yeah, I know. You and, know, uh, at a third of the price. Yeah, we talked about that. You know, back when I was appraising houses for all those years, it used to be pretty easy when you'd walk in because you could tell what was vinyl, you could tell what was ceramic, you could tell obviously what carpet was down there. But nowadays, you almost got to you almost got a feel of it. You know, to to know whether it's whether it's ceramic or wood or vinyl or whatever else might be down there. You know, there's a product that I'm going to tell you about now that uh, it's a substitute for ceramic tile. Okay. Especially if you've got a crawl space under your house and maybe you've had trouble with the tile, ceramic tile cracking. Right. Uh, there's a product that that's uh, made by Congolia called Dura Ceramic. Uh-huh. You have that in and my that, house, yeah. I think we put some of that in your house, didn't we? Yes, we sure did. Yeah, and and uh, you can put it down with or re with or without a grout line, and uh, we put a lot of it of all places in elevators. But uh, 
used to have ceramic tile that was constantly cracking. But uh, it, it's still uh, just about half the cost of what ceramic is, but it, it's a lifetime floor, and it will stay down and service you well, and you just clean it with a damp mop and, and go on about it. Yeah, you know, and if you get the right pattern, like, uh, well, I, you know, I think we made the right decision in our case, but if you get the right pattern on that, uh, it doesn't show dirt very much. And, uh, uh, you know, we have a very large, not a very large, but a medium-sized dog, about a 55-pound dog. And, uh, there, you know, she doesn't scratch that floor up like she does some of the hardwood. That's true. Uh, it's very durable. You just uh, damp mop it. You don't have to worry about any long-term maintenance, and um, everything about it is pretty good. That's true. Speaking of long-term maintenance, when you get into uh, house components, one of the uh, one of the components that takes a lot of maintenance, if it's an old one, is a window. But you got a pretty good uh, outlet to get that taken care of, don't you? Yeah, we got a sponsor that can take care of that window for you. I'm I, telling you. I thought so. Uh, economy's uh, economy siding and window company and gutter company and fix just about anything on the outside company. I mean, uh, Stormy does a great job and I'm proud to have him as a sponsor on the show. And uh, he's able to come out and make the outside of your house look brand new and maintenance free. And uh, you can uh, depend on him to put you some new replacement windows in or if you like vinyl siding and you want to cover that wood that uh, is always peeling and, and you're having to paint it every other year. Uh, it's good to, to have some metal up there. Every once in a while, it may get a little dirty and get a little buildy on it, but you can uh, take you some of that TSP I was talking about and wash it off, and it'll look brand new and look like you just painted it. So uh, Economy Siding is a good company to call and... Uh, to let them come out and make your house maintenance free. And, uh, you know, it's kind of nice to have an outside surface, and all you got to do is wash it down every now and then with a garden hose. It looks brand new all over again. That's true. You know, if, if you watch if you watch any TV at all, much right, especially if you're, unless you're on some of the newer services where the commercials are not as, as prevalent, but uh, the two things that you see every day right now is Joe Namath trying to sell you some more insurance and guys selling gutter guards now why would you want to order a gutter guard off of a television or off of the internet when you can pick up the phone and call stormy and let stormy do the job and if on the rare occasion that something was not quite right he's right there to fix it well i, I never heard to, understood people do a lot of impulse buying but I never was a fan of Joe Namath when he even had a football in his hand. <laughs> and there he is waving stuff about Medicare right now. I don't yeah. like it when he does that. I'm sick of watching those commercials. It interrupts my yeah. gun smoke I know. Uh, too yeah. often when I'm trying to watch that. Back, back, uh, back. But, the... uh, you know, but. No, go ahead. The, the, you talk about the gutter guard, just like everybody is, is advertising them between that and those, uh, walk-in bathtubs. Yes. And uh, I can tell you a few stories on those bathtubs that uh, make you rethink that situation pretty good, too. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know what it is. People, and, and there's another one, Jim, these, uh, these uh, national companies that will advertise putting you in a uh, sunroom yeah. and uh, build a, a patio cover on the back of your house only to find out that it's just some knothead sitting in an office in another part of the world, and you'll have Bubba and Jethro show up at your house most of the time and not even licensed, and uh, you'll find out that they subbed it out to them, and they ain't got a clue what's going on. Yep, I'm, I'm afraid you're absolutely right. You will not find that with economy siding and windows. Stormy and his crew will take care of it. They're local. They're right here. They do it right. They do it properly with good materials. So give them a call at 731-422-3828 or economysiding.com. That will get that done. You'll be satisfied, and we'll make our sponsors happy. And, and not only that, they speak English. <laughs> 
now there's a plus if I ever heard one. <laughs> oh man, man, man. Oh me, John. We need to take about another yeah, ninety. You can communicate with them. Yeah, right. We need to take about another what we got here? About a ninety-second break. It'll be the last one of the morning, and uh, we'll come back with about ten minutes left, and we'll wrap this thing up on tricks of the trade with John Allen. Seven three one eight nine one six one six one. Get in the line or Victory Honda text line is seven three one four one zero seven five six zero. We'll be right back. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and release bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Brown at Advanced We Have a Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. Williams Equipment and Supply is your homegrown, locally owned Bobcat dealer in the Mid-South. And with Bobcat's leading technology backed up by our staff of factory trained parts and service techs, contractors get their work done efficiently and profitably. Whether you prefer to rent, lease, or own, Williams Equipment and Supply has what you need at a price you can afford. This is Wallace West, the Bobcat Man. Call me at 731-668-4352 and let me help you get the equipment that you need to get the job done. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. It is indeed on this Saturday morning. It is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen here on 93.1. John's on uh, location uh, elsewhere today. Be headed back home after a little while. And uh, we got him corralled for the next 10 minutes or so. So get your questions in. 999, uh, excuse, excuse me, 731 410 is the Victory Honda text line. And the call-in number is 731-891-6161. John, what else on your mind this morning? Well, there's a, I had a few call-ins this week with people having trouble with water leaking in their chimney. Uh-oh. And I know it's been a while since we've talked about that, but uh, chimney leaks are pretty common. That doesn't mean you got a roof leak. It just means you got a chimney leak. You see, uh, brick is not waterproof. Right. And you would think it would be, but it's not. And and concrete's not waterproof. And when you get a roaring fire going in a fire, and it heats up from the inside, and then you got a, a good heavy rain on the outside, that water will wick into that brick. And the next thing you know, you've got water dripping down uh, right in front of your profile uh, and, and your firebox. And you wonder, what in the world's going on here? So you go upstairs and you check your flashings, and uh, uh, one of two things normally are, has happened. Number one is the top of that chimney has cracked, allowing water in, or you've just got water that is uh, seeping in through the brick. Well, you can go out and put some sealers on your brick, but you got to be careful what you get because you don't want it to look like you've done anything to your brick. So people will go out and get these clear sealers. Now, here's your problem, and here's a little tip I want to pass on to you. There are products out there such as Thompson's Water Seal, right? and that's a good product, but it doesn't last long enough because the sun... The ultraviolet rays of the sun will break down the uh, water repellent properties of that, and within about six, eight months, it'll start wicking in water again. When you go to look for a clear sealer on masonry, you need to have one that has a high percentage of solids in it. 
And uh, Thompson's water sales got about five to six percent solids, and there are some brands out there that have less than that. But there's a company here in, in Jackson that I use quite frequently called Williams Equipment, right. and they have the commercial sealants out there. And uh, you can spray this product on with a little pump-up garden sprayer, but it has anywhere from 18 to 26 percent solids in it. The more percentage of solids you have in it, the more expensive it's going to be, but it gets the job done. Gotcha. And uh, if you'll, cut, say, coat the outside of your chimney with that, rather than something that you might just buy over the counter at the big box store, you might find that it will last a whole lot longer for you. Okay. Now, there's something that I've heard of, because I've had this problem with a, pr- uh, a previous house of mine, and my son has had uh, the problem with, uh, with his house. Uh, something uh, that you, you build up on the roof near the chimney to divert the water flow around it. What is that all about? Yeah, you, know, you can build a cricket. You know, okay. just like the little insect, the cricket goes on the back of your chimney to where instead of the water coming down your roof and hitting the back side of the, the chimney, this cricket is, is a little sloped gable roof, so to speak, that throws the water to each side of the chimney and keeps it from rolling up the back side of your chimney and jumping your flash. Uh-huh. So you can build a, a cricket up there and it will throw the water to each side. Works real well on pe- people that have uh, wide chimneys, like five and six feet wide. Um, you get a hard rain, these crickets are a lifesaver because they will... Uh, throw the water to the side. Also, they keep the leaves from building up behind the chimney. And uh, a lot of times, especially on some of these lower-pitched roofs, chimneys are just a necessity. I mean, crickets are a necessity to put on the back side of that chimney to properly repel the water and, and keep it from leaking on the inside. Gotcha. We got about four minutes left in uh, in the segment, John. Uh, quick, uh, quick text. Texture says, "I am sick and tired of my stinking gas logs. Ventless, is there a better alternative?" You know, I'll bet you he does not have his logs arranged properly. If he will look at his logs. And if there is a flame that is hitting the logs, he's got them in wrong. Uh-huh. Uh, the flame is not supposed to touch the log on the ventless logs. If they do, you'll get a soot buildup. You will have a stench that will come up. Um, and, you, and about all you can do is take them apart and clean them. And uh, if he can find a box... For the original instructions that show the way the logs were arranged, right. put them back the way the factory says for them to be. But uh, I'll bet you that's what that texture's problem is. Yeah, you know, I, I have had that problem with, with my own, and you're right. There, There is a proper way to put them in according to the, uh, to the instructions, but that assumes that us guys are going to find those instructions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you where you can go to get it figured out. Where is that? Uh, and, and I always go to these folks because they are so knowledgeable about fireplaces. And let's go to Walt Meston's down on Raglan Road there in Jackson. Right. And uh, if you'll go in there and talk to Wally and tell him what the problem is, not only will he give you proper instructions on how to assemble those logs, he'll be able to troubleshoot that situation. And if there is any type of cleaner available to help with that odor problem, he will have that product or the knowledge to tell you what to do. So if you call the Fireplace Center, uh, uh, that's what is listed in the phone book, if you still have a phone book. And uh, they're on Raglan Road right across the railroad track, and uh, he'll be able to fix you up. All right, you know, I, hadn't, I haven't thought about that. I hadn't thought about uh, Walt and Wally in, in a while. And that uh, texture, that is a, a great idea. They, uh, if anybody in this area knows uh, gas logs, fireplaces, they they uh, most definitely do. So yeah, that's a great great idea. John, we got about a minute left. Anything in wrapping up today? 
Well, you know, people are starting to plan a lot of remodeling projects. And the only little tip I want to pass on that make yourself a little home improvement book, a little a little uh, folder that's got everything listed that you buy as far as products, the paint colors, the manufacturers, where you may have got your rug from, where you bought your paint, what type of shingles you put on your roof. Uh, we talked about locks earlier. Write down the type of locks you put on if you put on some of those new electronic locks because when the time comes that you need to match that stuff, that information is going to be, going to be very, very valuable in order to uh, fix or repair or take care of anything that you need to modify maybe five, ten years from now. But knowing where all that stuff comes from, you'll be able to uh, be one step ahead of trying to match things if that's what you have to do. Another great idea from John Allen's Tricks of the Trade here on 93.1. John, be safe coming home, man. We'll talk to you first of the week, and we'll be back here next weekend on 93.1 with more of Tricks of the Trade with John Allen.